Economics is useful for helping us decide what we should do about HIV-AIDS healthcare problems. A 2005 estimate has about 40 million people in the world with HIV-AIDS, and about 26 million of those are in Africa. If we look at the adult population aged 15 to 49, prevalence in Africa could be greater than 7%. One way of treating HIV-AIDS is with what's called retroviral therapy. That means taking a lot of drugs. That means visiting a doctor. It then means going to a clinic maybe once a month to get new drugs. It means that over time, the quality of the drugs has to be monitored. Sometimes the drugs don't work on everyone. And often, HIV-AIDS builds up an immunity to the drugs, and then the drugs have to be changed. And furthermore, the patient really has to be very conscientious taking the right drugs at the right point in time. Not every country really has the public health infrastructure to see these treatments through. Alternative methods for limiting the HIV-AIDS problem focus on prevention, and there are numerous options here. One of them is that mothers transmit HIV-AIDS to their children, although this can be stopped by use of a drug. Another problem is that often HIV-AIDS is transmitted through blood transfusions, the blood can be better monitored. Sexual abstinence and condoms limit the rate of HIV-AIDS transmission. Male circumcision seems to make HIV-AIDS transmission less frequent. And finally, treating other sexually transmitted diseases and limiting the occurrence of, say, open sores or bleeding open sores on the body also seems to limit the rate of transmission for HIV-AIDS. There have been numerous studies of which methods of addressing the HIV-AIDS problem are most effective, and in general what researchers find is that prevention is far more cost-effective than treatment. There's one paper which ranks methods of approach to HIV-AIDS from most to least cost-effective, and just to go through these, let's take a look. Surprisingly to me, the most effective is mass media campaigns warning people about the dangers of HIV-AIDS, Next most effective is peer education for sex workers, and then condom distribution for sex workers. Those, of course, are all prevention. Next in line comes tuberculosis treatments for people who already have HIV-AIDS. Of course, that's a form of treatment rather than prevention. There's then blood transfusion safety, and then preventing or limiting mother-to-child HIV-AIDS transmission with a drug. For the most part here, it's prevention which is winning out. If we look at what is measured as the least effective, well, it turns out that the retroviral treatments come in last, and it really is a big difference. It depends, of course, upon the country and the context, but in some settings, it may cost up to $500 on average to save a life here using retrovirals. Let's compare that to methods of prevention. If we make blood transfusion safer, that may cost per life year saved about $50, in other words, it's 10 times more effective. If we could take the money we're spending on retrovirals and use it for methods of prevention, it's quite possible that we could be saving 10 times as many lives. Some people may say, well, why can't we do both? But that's missing the point, the fundamental economic point of opportunity cost. For any given amount of money we're going to be spending on addressing HIV-AIDS, we should be spending it in the more cost-effective ways because that will save many more lives. To read more on this topic and to take a closer look at all of the estimates, I very much recommend the piece by David Canning, The Economics of HIV-AIDS in Low-Income Countries, The Case for Prevention.